Okay. The stream's been going. Okay. Today in the stream we are going to be writing, and you see that I have a circle here, and I will explain what that is later on. Um, I don't know how many uh, people are going to be tuning in or whatever, or how many people are even watching right now. Um, so, let me just go on uh, about what's, what's, what's going on. Well, how many people are on right now? Zero people. So, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to be kind of waiting for some people to start. Um, let me go. I'm gonna open it on my phone, so I kind of know what's going on, uh, without having to like look at my Chrome thing, cause it's like, oh, figure out what's going on over there. But you know, it takes a little clicking. <laughs> so anyway. Today, we are writing. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be uh, looking at writing prompts. And I'm going to write a screenplay based off of some random factors. The factors being genre. Uh, I mean, the what are they? They're not factors. They're parameters, I guess. Um... But we're going to be working with genre, a specific line I have to include in the script, and the personality of one of the more main characters. Not necessarily the main character, but a very prominent character in the script. So, um, let me just write that down. Um, prompts are going to be genre I got to turn that down genre line and character and those are going to be our, our little thing if that makes sense okay so we're going to put that right up there so i have like a little handy dandy uh generator over here you won't be able to see it but i will and i'll tell you what i get uh from seeing it so uh we're gonna start by picking our genre by uh, a random wheel so i'm looking at the wheel right now and it's spinning and it gives me action okay i'm not good at writing action it's not going to be very fun uh, to read. Yeah, well, unless I make it sound cool. So the genre is action. Um, I'm going to get rid of the bowl. So, yeah, genre is action. Now, uh, we are going to look for a specific quote to go along with this. Um, the quote being I'm not entirely sure so let me let me generate the, the the quote write me an opening line that's what the uh, website says okay the quote is the world is full of people who are in love with Andreas Spear no idea who that is but I guess uh, that's a thing the world is in uh, the world is full of people who are in love with Andrea Spear. Um, maybe that can be a character. I don't know if like Andrea Spear is like a real person. Let me Google that real quick. I'm just saying I don't know a lot about uh, about the world, except for what's happening right now, which is something I'm not gonna talk about. <laughs> Andrea Andrea Spear. I don't think it's uh, there's a there's like an actual person that goes along with that. So cool. I don't have to. I don't have to make this accurate to the to the person they are. Uh, I can just kind of make up who that person is. Okay, that's our line. Now the character personality we are going to generate, and they are. It's loading. Oh, okay then. They are self 
pitying, narrow-minded, humorless, and abstract. Okay. Let's, let's put that. That's a, that's a lot to, to get down. One of the characters that I have to write have to be self-pitying, narrow-minded, humorless, and abstract. Cool. <laughs> uh, cool. Cool. That's, that's, uh, that's the thing. Here. Um, I'm gonna try and make that bold. Well, if I do that, then all of them are bold. So let me just... Genre line and character. I'm just gonna put the thing so I know. Anyway, genre line character. The world is full of people who are in love with Andrea Spear. Self pitying, narrow minded, humorless, and abstract. So I gotta, I gotta do. Um, I make, I gotta make a script here, and I am using a program called Trilby. And that's going to be my screenwriting program. And we're going to write a screenplay. An action screenplay. Uh, with the line, The world is full of people who are in love with Andreas Spear. Spear. And then one of our characters has to be self-pitying. Pitying. Narrow-minded. Humorless and abstract. All right, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna choose one of those, or like I'm gonna I'm gonna choose choose one of those instead of all of them. Just self pitying. That's, and then I'll I'll expand on that character. So, what I'm going to do for this is I am going to figure out what I want from from this uh, little this little thing. So I'm gonna put. I'll put that here. Um, I'm probably just gonna move it down here or something. And this story circle right here is just gonna nope cancel. It's just gonna move up. Here we go. We got our story circle here, and this story circle is going to help me kind of plot out what this story is gonna be. Um, I don't know how long the story is going to be, but I'm thinking it's probably at most going to be ten pages. Which I can do. Um, 10 or 15 pages. This is an act. Okay, 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 okay. I want to make. Freaking, I don't know. This is this is difficult for me to think. I'm going to think of the, the, the time period that these people are going to be in. This is an action. And I'm, I'm thinking this might be a, a, a modern. A modern time period um as we get the world is full of people who are in love with andrea spear which makes me think of a more modern era you know maybe andrea spear is like a celebrity or something i don't know uh character is self-pitying so i'm not entirely sure uh if that should be our main character or not um so we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, <laughs> this is this is difficult. The writing process for me uh, does, definitely does not come from from prompts, but I haven't done a prompt in like years, so I want to try it again. This is already difficult. <laughs> um, genre line. I, I'm just I'm just trying to. Okay, 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 okay. Andrea Spear. Is going to be our main character. How about that? Andrea Spear. So the first the first point. Uh, I'm going to go over the story circle. For anyone that may not know about it. Although there is only one person on the stream. So you already know about that. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just write it out then. We start character. Andrea Spear. Uh, celebrity. Or celebrity. There we go. Um, so they are a celebrity. Um, what do they want? They want... Um, not entirely sure. Andrea Spear is a celebrity. 
I don't know if that's a boy's name or not. Andreas, Andreas, however you pronounce it. Um, is Andreas a boy's name? <laughs> I don't know if Google has like a straightforward answer for that. The first thing you should know if you are considering Andreas for your baby's name is that most countries all over the world name it's a boy's name. Okay. How do you pronounce that? Pronounce Andreas or Andreas. How to pronounce Andreas? What? Andreas. Andreas. <laughs> That's weird. Andreas. 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 Okay. That first audio clip of them pronouncing it was so low quality. That's a professional website. I'm. I assume. I. It's just so. It's like a. It's a website that like tells you how to pronounce it, and it's like. Andreas, what the frick? I'm not. How am I supposed to know? Andreas, no, Andreas. They said Andreas, so Andreas is our boy. Our boy Andreas Spierre is a celebrity, and he uh, is famous because he is a actor. He's an actor. Um, he's self pitying, though. So maybe, um, but the world loves him. So I can't really say that he's a failed actor because the world is in love with Andrea Spierre. So, uh, that's a little difficult to write. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Andrea Spierre is a celebrity, but he doesn't like being an actor. Maybe he wanted to do other things. Other things. Maybe he wanted to... This is also an action. <laughs> I'm making this guy a celebrity, but he's... Huh. Alright, you know what? Um, maybe he wanted... To just kind of live a, a normal life or whatever. But now he's an actor. And since this is an action, something happens to him. And he gets thrown into an even worse, uh, an even less normal life. Which makes him very uh, upset. But he's self-pitying. So, it's interesting. Um, man, I don't even know if he should be a celebrity. This is a really interesting uh, combination. The world's full of people who are in love with Andreas. Andreas Spierre. I don't know. Maybe instead of a celebrity, he's like a... Um, maybe he's like a, a war hero. You know? Andreas Spierre. War hero. And maybe this is in the modern era. Um, but he's self-pitying. Maybe he's like kind of retired. Um, retired war hero. But he wants to get back out there and, and, uh, I don't know. He want he wants to get back out there, be be back in the be back in the fighting, because that's the only thing he's good at. I guess. So what does he want? Well, Mister, he wants to be part of the military again. Maybe this is. I'm gonna make it space. This is going to be a space thing. Wants to be part of the military again. Uh, wants to be part of the military again. You know, he wants to fight. Um, 
he enters an unfamiliar situation. Um, so let's, so he's retired or whatever. He's living at home. He enters an unfamiliar situation. I don't know if we can entirely give him what he wants, but it's also action. So he would kind of be fighting, but maybe he's not able to fight again. Like maybe like, like the, the fact is he injured himself beyond repair and he can't fight anymore but he wants to be fight he wants to fight now he enters an unfamiliar situation that he uh, where he is being attacked but he's not able to fight back um yeah let's try that maybe he gets uh yeah gets um He gets imprisoned by aliens. Imprisoned by aliens. There we go. This is really stupid. I'm just saying, this is a stupid story. But who cares? I'm not very good at it, but it doesn't matter. So he enters an unfamiliar situation. He adapts to it. Um, so he doesn't have... <laughs> Uh, what, what's the reason he can't fight? Because he's paralyzed. Um, no, he's not paralyzed. How about he, um... I'm not sure. Maybe, um... Maybe... He's just, um... I think what we're going to do is that, um, like, kind of that All Might thing, you know, in My Hero Academia, where uh, this dude, he, uh, he, his, like, whole, what was a respiratory system? I don't remember. Was, like, destroyed or whatever. So I'm going to say, um, lungs don't work properly. So he's not able to, um, well, that's the reason he can't fight. So I'm just going to say reason he can't fight. Reason he can't fight, lugs don't work properly. Uh, how does he adapt to this? He gets imprisoned by aliens. He's not really able to fight back. How does he adapt to it? He... I'm not sure. We'll figure that out. Um, but we get to the slowest point. Um... He wants to be part of military again. Gets imprisoned by aliens. Don't know how we adapt to it, but he gets what he wants. He gets to fight the uh, his captors. I don't know how you spell captors. That's probably it. Probably. He gets to fight the captors at a cost. He is weak. Uh, well, his body is weak. Uh, weakens like he was already kind of dying or whatever before then but now his body is even weaker now after he fights um, his body weakens he returns to a f his familiar place um, maybe he doesn't return maybe he's stuck on that alien ship forever or whatever I don't know Galeano. Oh, Sura! I remember you. Hello! Hey, hey. Hi, hi. Okay. Um, his body weakens. He doesn't return to his familiar place. But now he's changed. He is cunning. Uh, he's wise. Clever. We'll, we'll do that. Clever. At first, he was a strong boy, and he would you know, use brute force or whatever, but now he is forced to be clever. So that's how he adapts. Forced to be come wiser. That's who he, how he adapts. He gets to fight his captors. His body weakens a little. That's the cost. And then, yep. You remember me? I do. I was actually going to text you the other day, 
but I didn't really remember how. <laughs> um, joking. <laughs> okay. So let's get, uh, let's get cooking. This is our story right now. Reason he can't fight, lungs don't work properly, um, not as strong as he used to be. Okay. The world is full of people who are in love with Andreas Spierre. So let's, uh, let's start working on this then. Let's get our opening scene. Um, well first, before we get our opening scene, we want to know... Um, here. Here, right here is our scene triangle, which is going to, I have no Instagram or Snap anymore, would have been useless. Oh, yeah, definitely would have. Uh, we are going to be, um, working on making our scene. So first, what we need, uh, we need the scene objective which is just kind of what the what the scene wants, like like what we're what the scene is for. Then we got to get the super objective, which is what the character wants, or like why he's even doing this. And then we get to single point to propel the story forward. There we go. So this is going to be our, our thing. Oh my god. There we go. Triangle. <laughs> okay. Let's get cooking, I guess. How's your sister? Um, Which one? The one that's uh, out of state? She's doing well. Works out of Fred Meyers. <laughs> Okay, um, scene objective. Scene objective. Well, let's let's think of the first scene. The first scene is probably just going to introduce him, and that's probably just going to be, um, you know what would be cool? Um, let's introduce th if this is going to be a pilot or whatever. Scene one, exterior. Memorial. Oh, wait, 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 wait. How about this? You want an int TV. I don't know. I just kind of want it to be like a, like, a, like a little TV documentary, like news thing about him. And then we transition into the actual thing. Day. So who cares? Um, a T on the TV screen a um, screen footage of battleships in space plays um, explosions and gunfire Um, cascade through the frame. Well, yeah, frame a voice over is heard. There we go. We're gonna narrator. Um, TV narrator. Here we go. And then we get um, VO. Okay. I'm really bad <laughs> at dialogue, so this is gonna be kind of difficult. We'll see how it goes. Um, oof. Okay. 
I'm bad at dialogue like the first time around. If I clean it up, it's 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 all right. But I'm also like ugh, military stuff. Oof. I'm I have no idea what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. Uh bad 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 dudes shoot good dudes but good dudes find a way to be bad dudes hooray we won we win that's that's tv narrator <laughs> um this was me final battle between the Russians and the US in the above the at sphere of Jupiter. This was the final battle between the Russians and the US above the atmosphere of Jupiter. Um, we'll just do that. Battle genius before the before the space wars. No, that's stupid. Before the Jupiter wars. Before the war of Jupiter. Um. Concluded. <laughs> this was the final battle between the Russians and the U.S. before the War of Jupiter was won. Um. Well, they must go depending on how long you're alive. I'll come back. Okay. Goodbye. Um. Oh shoot. You know what? I just realized you can't see what I'm writing. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh my gosh. Very, very dumb. Dumb boy. I'm dumb. All right. <laughs> I was I was watching the preview of the of the live stream to see when it would catch up, and I was like, "Man, that is a long delay." And then, and then I realized I I didn't um switch over the screens. Very dumb, stupid. Okay. This was the final battle between the Russians and the U.S. before the War of Jupiter was won. The Russian troops fled from the from the atmosphere. Here, um, retreating back to. Treating back to back to retreating back to Earth. Retreating back to Earth. Yep. Okay. Two hundred million American troops were killed in the entire entirety um, the, of the war. 200 million American troops were killed in the entirety of the war. Uh, 50,000 more would have died if it weren't for Andreas I wonder like like what 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 is the origin of of Andreas like what origin of Andreas I want to know like, like where does that come from not who owns Android no <laughs> origin of Andreas 
Andreas. Um, Lithuania? I guess. Okay. Lithuania. I, I guess we'll just, um, I mean, doesn't really matter. Like, we'll say he's American, but that's like his, like, like his family lived in Lithuania, in Europe. But, um, that died if it weren't for Andreas Speer, a second generation American. Second generation American who grew up on Mars. When he was drafted, um, uh, while uh, while most troops were drafted into the military, Spear was volunteered. Uh, I don't know. This uh, hey yo, what any connection to your other work? Um, no, it's not any connection. It's just kind of a fun little thing I'm doing to take a break uh, from the other thing. It's just a little, uh, little short story that I'm making. A little pilot for another. Uh, it's just for fun. The pilot's not really going to go anywhere. But I just wanted some, like, writing exercise to, to do for fun. Okay, right, this was the final battle between the Russians and the U.S. Although, it is kind of confusing because I am talking about planets and space and all that in this one. So, I guess it's pretty it's pretty weird. This was the final battle between the Russians and the U.S. before the War of Jupiter was won. The Russian troops fled from the atmosphere, retreating back to Earth. 200 million American troops were killed in the entirety of the war. 50,000 more would have died if it weren't for Andreas Spier, a second-generation American who grew up on Mars. While most troops were drafted into military, Spear volunteered with great enthusiasm. America, America. Anyway, great enthusiasm proving his. Okay. With great enthusiasm. Um. I don't know. Um, Spear saved. Uh, after, okay, wait, okay, okay. After half of the half of the U.S. ships were blown up, the battle was almost lost battle was almost lost um battle was almost lost but spear um oh shoot <laughs> what did i do spear volunteered with great enthusiasm After half of the U.S. ships were blown up, the battle was almost lost, but Spierre, um, until the commander, until commander, I don't know, freaking Banks, <laughs> was, commander Banks was, Informed of Spears in how do I spell this word? Infiltration. <laughs> Infiltration. I hope that's how you spell it. Infiltration. I gotta look that up. See if that's a that's how you spell it. Oh my gosh. 
Infiltration. Yeah. Uh, so that's not how you spell it. So, Infiltration. Infiltration. Okay. It was informed of Spears. Uh, it was informed of Spears Infiltration of the commanding Russian ship. He fought alone through the crew and single and in the single hand uh, I don't know how to smell that and then we hand deadly single-handedly over through the over through the crew on board All right, just a second. I shall be right back. Okay, I'm back. I don't know how good this is, um, or I guess how bad it is, because it's bad, hey-ho! Uh, but I don't know, we'll see. He fought alone through the crew and single-handedly overthrew the crew on board. Okay, he fought alone and alone and single-handedly overthrew the crew on board, becoming a legend and war hero. Oh, a war hero. Shortly after apprehending control back up arrived to to maintain it back up back up arrived to maintain it however uh, however um when when Spear returned home he was rushed was rushed to the hospital it was discovered that that the battle had damaged his res respiratory system and he would no longer be able to fight for the US um okay let's read this and see see what this uh see what this sounds like this was the final battle. Okay, on the screen, footage of battleships in space plays. Explosions and gunfire cascade to the frame. A voice over is heard. This was the final battle between the Russians and the U.S. before the War of Jupiter was won. The Russian troops fled from the atmosphere, retreating back to Earth. 200 million American troops were killed in the entirety of the war. 15,000 more would have died if it weren't for Andrea Spear a second-generation American who grew up on Mars. While most troops were drafted into the military, Spear volunteered with great enthusiasm. After half of the U.S. ships were blown up, the battle was almost lost until Commander Banks was informed of Spear's infiltration of the commanding Russian ship. He fought alone and single-handedly overthrew the crew on board, becoming a war hero. Shortly after apprehending control, backup arrived to maintain it. However, when Spear returned home, he was rushed to the hospital. It was discovered that the battle had damaged his respiratory system, 
and he would no longer be able to fight for the U.S. Dun dun dun. Um, and then, um, a military legend was now on the bench. There we go. Okay. Now we get to um how do I Ah oh my gosh. It just saved it for me. And now I gotta open the whole folder again, and then it's gonna be like, what do you wanna save it as? And I don't wanna save it. You just wanna start the, the scene. I wanna make it a different scene now. Cause I, I can do it up here. Enter tab. How do I, how do I make a scene? Cause like that, that's a scene. And it's like, good job making that scene. How do I make another scene? Action, enter. Okay. Character, tab. Stop. It's not letting me type. Oh my gosh. Okay, now it is. How do I... Tools. Help. Help! Okay. <laughs> scene. Command. Change current element style to scene. Alt S. Okay. Scene 2. Int. Spears. House. Day. The TV continues to play as Andreas, a skinny, well, yeah, skinny, yeah, skinny old man sits on the sits on a chair sits on a chair he listens to the TV frowning okay now we get TV narrator yeah voiceover and says however for this story has a happy ending. Andreas Spear. Okay. Now, Andreas Spear lives happily in in his hometown his hometown with his wife um, lives happily in his hometown with his wife wife um. Julia Spear haha <laughs> good good name <laughs> oh my gosh this is a pretty bad script but you know I, it's just a writing prompt, okay? I know I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, what I'm doing, but you know it's whatever. It, it just helps to have um, to to want to make this. I mean, I I guess it's fun to make this. It's definitely not. Uh, I'm definitely not inspired to, but you know who cares? Now Andrea Spear lives happily in his hometown with his wife Julia Spear. 
and then Andreas runs. Um. Oh my gosh! Gosh! Gorsh! Ah! Okay. Andreas turns to a to a um. What are those things you hold ashes in? <laughs> oh my gosh! I keep forgetting what that thing is. Um. Thing. A Google thing you hold ashes in. <laughs> it's an urn. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was an urn. I just didn't want to be sound stupid when I when I said urn. And is this my first screenplay? Uh, no. I have written many many screenplays. Um, but this one is just particular particularly uninspired because it's a prompt. Um. Uh, I got here here's the thing genre action line the world is full of people who are in love with Andrea Spear character self-pitying these are re these were randomly generated so I had to write a pilot for a show um, being and and this would be randomly generated and uh, so I, I made like a little episode story for this one and it's gonna be like a 15, 10 to 15 page long story and this is kind of the I don't know if uh, I guess he's instead of aliens I think I just wanted to be a human thing maybe the Russians come back or maybe gets imprisoned by a terrorist group okay you know what he just gets imprisoned by unknown group I don't know so yeah this is not my urn yeah urn <laughs> um let's see Andreas turns to an urn I don't know, to an urn sitting on um Sitting in a glass casing with other trinkets. Casing with other trinkets. Injurious frowns. He uh, turns off the TV and stands up um. oh you know what just give me a moment it sits in the chair as the sill oh et I think that's how you spell it uh, I gotta, I gotta see how you spell silhouette. Okay, I almost got it right. It's, it's one L. Ah, crap. Silhouette. The silhouette of Andreas, a skinny old man. Okay, the TV continues to play as the silhouette of Andreas, a skinny old man, sits on a chair. How Andreas... Now, Andreas Spear lives happily in his hometown with his wife, Julia Spear. Um... A panning shot as we see urn with the name Ms. Okay, the name Julia written on it in a glass casing with other trinkets and artifacts. Artifacts. A picture of a young Andreas young to 
is flexing with with um, with blonde with with clean cut hair and muscles. Andrea stands up. Okay. Silly. Uh, okay, okay. Andreas sits on a chair. Andreas stands up. He is uh, stands up from his chair. He has he has a balding head with gray strings of hair and um, sprawling sprawling from the sides of his head His arms are small. His yeah, his arms are small, and his shirt um, his arms are small. Yeah. Anyway, he stands up from his chair. Okay. Small. He starts to hunch over. He starts to hunch over. Starts to hunch over. Turn that damn TV off. Turn that damn TV off. There we go. The TV light blinks as the screen goes black make me some coffee make me some coffee the um Keurig in his um, a machine <laughs> begins uh, a machine starts up as black liquid pours into a white mug there we go sorry I'm being so quiet but I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm trying here Okay, this is uh, page two. What is this? Oh, this is like, this is right here is page one. Man, I wish Studio Binder had this because I, I used to use Studio Binder, but they just didn't tell me uh, how many pages I was at unless I was printing. But the the printing, ah, excuse me, the printing sizes always differed from computer to computer. So there was no actual just set like length of the page on Studio Binder. And it was like, Sorry, we don't have a page count right now, but you can use the printer to figure out. But it's like, no, I don't want to do that. Plus, it differs from computer com to computer. I hate you, Studio Binder. And so I stopped using it. I don't hate Studio Binder. It's actually a pretty good uh, script uh, screen screenplay making software thing. I don't know. <laughs> but it just didn't have a page count. And that's a deal breaker for me. So, yep. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, a machine starts up as black liquid pours into a white mug. Um, AI. Um, I don't know. V. O. Did. Did you need anything 
else, sir? Um, injurious. He says, no, shut up. <laughs> um, and he just grabs uh, the mug and immediately uh, sips from it. It's a little hot, sir. Uh, I hope it hurts me. <laughs> I hope it hurts me. It's the the only uh, feeling I get these days. <laughs> it's a little hot, sir. Hope it hurts me. That's the only feeling I get these days. Grr. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I shall con um, let's see. Are you feeling okay, sir? Should I contact the suicide hotline? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't think so. It hurts me. No, nope, no. Nope. It's a little hot, sir. Um, I know. I like the pain. Reminds me of me when I was my age. <laughs> okay. Reminds me of me when I was my age. Anyway. I just think it's a little funny, but I don't I know. I like the pain. <laughs> it's a little edgy. It's not I'm not I'm not gonna make it edgy. I'm just gonna make it a writing thing. It's a little hot, sir. I know. I don't care. Injury. All right, cool. OBS is, it's back. It like stopped for a second, but it's cool. It's cool now. Um, I guess. And you just con continues to sip from the mug. Okay. You have a big day today, sir. At noon, you should. At noon, you have a meeting with the president. And at four, four, you are receiving a medal of honor from receiving a medal of honor at the memorial site. Memorial site. Um, memorial site downtown another president okay yeah another president I've met I've met five I've met five of them I don't need to meet another I don't need to meet another self I don't need to meet another I don't need to meet another sen. <laughs> I don't need to meet another. Cancel. Cancel. At four. 
o'clock thing. Okay, so that four o'clock thing. You've canceled every single cancer canceled every single you've been canceling a lot sir are you sure you don't want to go it's the same thing over and over again every buddy just talks about how great I used to be I don't need that today wanna play a board game maybe Uno or something Maybe Uno or something. Yeah, there we go. I can play Uno any time you you want, sir. But you should consider going today. A lot of people look up to you. Okay. This dude's life's too perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another president. I've met five of them. I don't need to meet another. And cancel the four o'clock thing. Uh, I should. I should probably do like four o'clock thing. Ah. Four o'clock. Four o'clock thing. You've been canceling a lot, sir. Are you sure you don't want to go? It's the same thing over and over again. Everybody just talks about how great I used to be. I don't need that today. I want to play a board game. Maybe Uno or something. I can play Uno anytime you want, sir. But you should consider going today. A lot of people look up to you. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'll do a mocking. Not of people look up to me and the people look up to you um and then um normal <laughs> little people look up to you don't care Don't care. Set up Uno. We're playing until midnight. Set up Uno. We're playing until midnight. Yes, sir. There we go. That's uh, that's the first scene. I'm gonna go read it. I guess. Let's see. Um, the TV continues to play as the silhouette of Andreas sits on a chair. Now, Andreas Spier lives happily in his hometown with his wife, Julia Spier. A panning shot as we see an urn with the same name, Julia written, w with the name Julia written on it, in a glass casing with other trinkets and artifacts. A picture of a young Andreas flexing with clean-cut hair and muscles. Andreas stands up from his chair. He has a balding head with gray strings of hair sprawling from the sides of his head. His arms are small. He starts to hunch over. Turn that damn TV off. I, I can't do his voice. Let me... Turn that damn TV off. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not very good, but uh, I'm not a voice actor. Well, not an old man voice actor. The TV light blinks as the screen goes black. Make me some coffee. <laughs> a machine starts up as black liquid pours into a white mug. Do you need anything else, sir? No, shut up. Andreas, Andreas grabs the mug and immediately sips from it. It's a little hot, sir. I know. I don't care. Andreas, conti Andreas continues to sip from the mug. You have a big day today, sir. At noon, you have a meeting with the president. And at four, you are receiving the Medal of Honor at the memorial site downtown. 
Another president? I've met five of them. I don't need to meet another. And cancel the four o'clock thing. You've been canceling a lot, sir. Are you sure you don't want to go? It's the same thing over and over again. Everybody just talks about how great I used to be. I don't need that today. I'm going to play a board game. Maybe Uno or something. I can play Uno anytime you want, sir. But you should consider going today. A lot of people look up to you. A lot of people look up to me. I don't care. Set up Uno. We're playing until midnight. You know, something like that. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's the first scene. Um, and then Alt S three exterior outside um, Andreas's house day. Okay. The silhouette of two people sit outside um, Andrew's, um, okay, stand outside Andreas's house. Ah. Um, I wonder what their motivation to get Andreas is. Um, I don't know. Uh, he's a, I don't know, he's a war hero. He, he does stuff. I don't know, let's look. Let's take a look, see. Um, Andreas Spier, retired war hero, wants to be part of the military again, gets imprisoned by an unknown group, forced to become wiser, uh, forced to become wiser in his fighting in his fighting he gets to fight his captors his body weakens he returns to his familiar state clever well he doesn't return to his familiar state so i'm going to figure out where what what happens to him so he's like having a normal day or whatever and then um he gets kidnapped by these dudes and they take him to their little hideout thing why would they kidnap Adrian Spear? And who are they? Ugh. Well, let's first think who would want Adrian Spear? The Russians, probably. But I don't know if I want to write Russians. <laughs> well, it's not because I don't like Russians, it's because I don't, I just don't know of the culture. But also, this is the future, so I mean, they could, it, it, it could change in a lot of ways, so I don't know. I could just kind of make up that it changed a little, to, so if I write something that's inaccurate, I could just say, well, it's the future. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh. Let's see. This guy, Andrea Spear, his... Life is perfect, but he doesn't do anything anymore. He just kind of sits around, gets a bunch of medals of honor, meets presidents, and that's his that's his life. That's it. He doesn't really do anything else. Um, but now he's getting kidnapped. But who would want to kidnap Andrea Spear? And why? Um, I'm thinking... Um, I'm thinking that this is gonna, why don't you model the enemies after the protagonist? What do you mean? Um, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. While I, uh, await a response, uh, you know, what do you mean? Yeah, I'll just I'll just type that so I can get a response quicker and I can talk about it. Um So anyway, <laughs> um who would want to attack this this poor man? People know that the America America, America really likes really likes their war heroes. And they um they don't like being attacked. Um, so I'm gonna say that the people who are kidnapping 
this uh, war hero really want the attention of America. Maybe they're using him as bait or something, you know? They were like, uh, America will come and, and say re rescue their war hero if we, if we kidnap them and make a ransom video or something. So that's their motivation. They want to get, they want to bait America. I'm going to say that. Um, but who would do this? The obvious, the obvious uh, answer would be Russia. But are we obvious? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be obvious. This is just kind of like a like a little ten page script thing, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I think we could also bait the audience, and we'll make them Russian. Uh, take all the qualities of someone who's heroic, who heroic, yeah, someone who's heroic. And then put him on the other side. Oh, yeah, okay. I totally get what you mean. Okay. Um. Yeah, that could be cool. So, why would Russia... I, I, think, I think we could, like, um, make this, like, a... They're attacking... Andreas Spear because they want to avenge the Russian commander who was on that ship that uh, Andreas Spear killed. He killed that, that Russian commander that was on the ship and they want revenge because this dude is the grandson or son of of this dude. I think we'll, we'll do son. He's, he's the son. How old is Andreas anyway? He's like freaking 70 or whatever. 70, 80. One of the two. Um, I think we'll make him like 76 or something. That's how old he is. Um, assuming that Andreas was like late 20s, like in, when he was in the war. He would, uh, yeah, he was his, in his late 20s in the war when he killed that commander. And the commander would have been, like, you know, also late 20s or so during that time. Um, late 20s or early 30s. So then he has a son during this time. And the son maybe is, like, 8 or whatever. Um, so let's say Andreas was 28 and then he is 76 now. Um, interesting. 20. 70 minus 20, which is 50. The sun would be like 48 now. So I could make a grandson. And a grandson is like in his 20s. Which would make sense. Yeah, I'll make it the grandson of the commander, you know, who wants to avenge their grandfather or whatever. Um, you know. So this is the protagonist, and he thinks that he's right. Um, and he wants to he wants to kill. Um, he wants to kill Andreas. But first, to get an advantage, he is also going to kidnap Andreas and bait America, America, because they kidnap one of the... Okay, yeah, I got it, I got it. Silhouette. The silhouette of a, of a man stands outside Andreas' house. He climbs over a cobble wall and disappears behind it. Now we're back into um, Andreas's house. Day. Okay. 
Um, yeah. Let's see. Um. Okay. Okay. This is uh. This is this is it. Andreas's house. Stay. And Andreas is. Andreas. Um. Holds holographic cards in his hands and places a um, ah, a green card down onto the deck, down onto the deck on the floor on the table another card appears over it with a skip symbol on it oh no 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 with a draw for a okay another a draw for Four card appears above it. Andreas uh -huh, throws his holographic card to the ground. Holographic cards to the ground. Forget it. <laughs> okay. Forget it. I'm not playing this anymore I'm a war veteran war veteran <laughs> card games are beneath me and then AI it's not healthy to <laughs> it's not healthy um, You shouldn't be a sore, uh, sore loser, sir. <laughs> you still have plenty of chances to win. Okay. I don't know when I'm going to end this. I'm, I'm probably not going to end this soon. You shouldn't be a sore loser, sir. You still have plenty of chances to win. <laughs> okay, whatever. Re restart our, the game. Actually shuffle this time. I did shuffle the first time I did shuffle the first time okay a crash is heard behind Andreas he turns to, to look he sees nothing I okay. What was that? What was that? Okay. I shall scan the house. I shall I'll scan the home. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. How long does it take to write an entire screenplay? <laughs> I don't know. Um it takes me a little while. I remember I wrote like a like a 28-page screenplay um in like one day. But then I wrote like a like a 23-page screenplay in like 3 days. 
so it really depends on <laughs> how I'm feeling. Uh, but this is only like a 10 to 15 page screenplay. But then again, it's taken me like an hour and 20 minutes to write three pages of this. Well, actually, uh, I don't know. I started actually typing this uh, like 50 minutes ago. So like it took me like an hour to get uh, three pages done. So I don't know. I'm planning on ending this sometime in the next 40 minutes or whatever. Um, sometime then. So I don't know. We could get uh, pretty close to the end of the screenplay by the end of this stream. But we're probably not going to finish it by the end of this stream. I don't think. I shall scan the home. Um... <laughs> You know if, you know if someone's actually in here, I'm probably gonna die, probably going to die. I can't do anything with my body. I have security measures. And seem to stop and seem to stop anyone from breaking in. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Andreas uh, turns to look at a plant that shuffles uh, a plant. A shuffled plant. He starts to stand up. Who's there? Yeah. Who's there? <laughs> uh, that's him. That's his. That's his. Uh, his sounds. That's what he sounds like. Okay. I do not detect anyone in the house. Uh, bullshit. There we go. Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I know someone's in here. Andreas uh, turns to grab a um, to grab <laughs> what what would he grab? I don't know. He'd grab something. What what what, what do old people have that, that um could be used as kind of uh, like maybe a weapon? Um, I don't know. I uh, grabs to grab a hard cover book and he turns back a man with a man with um um a man with Short blonde hair, hair wearing a long coat, knocks him on the head with with a gun. Andreas faints. Uh, Andreas, Andreas falls. Anyway, oh, so um, oof. Let's 
Shall we resume our game, sir? Sir? Yeah. So we're going to say the AI has no idea that there's anybody in there. And we shall figure out why. Uh, what, what scene was I on? To five. Scene five. Int. Hideout. I don't know what I'll call it, uh, but we'll... I don't know. <laughs> um, so... Ooh. Ah. Um I don't know what I'm going to do. So so let's see where where that uh leaves us here. Andreas Spier, retired war hero. We know he wants to be part of the military again. Okay. Um gets imprisoned by unknown group did we actually communicate that uh okay well we got this done but did we get did we communicate his want at all i don't think we did um at least not clearly okay i'm not playing with this this anymore i'm a war veteran card games are beneath me war veteran we should be out there be out there shooting we're not gonna say shooting fighting Russians and Chinese guys okay clearly your knowledge of our enemies of our state enemies clearly your knowledge of our state enemies is dated we haven't been at war with them since the end of the Jupiter Wars Clear your knowledge of our state enemies is dated. We haven't been at war with them since the end of Jupiter. Since the end of Jupiter Wars. We haven't been battling them since the end of the Jupiter Wars. Much rather be battling them than playing Uno. Play Uno with it with an AI that doesn't shuffle. <laughs> I did shuffle. Okay. So it's a sore loser. Sir, <laughs> you're just a sore, sore loser, sir. Crash is heard by behind. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, a crash is heard behind Andreas. He turns to look. He sees nothing. What was that? I shall scan the home. You know, if someone's actually in here, I'm probably gonna die. I can't do anything with my body. I have security measures. Didn't seem to stop anyone from breaking in. Who's there? I do not detect anyone in the house. Bullshit. Someone's in here. Anyway. Sir. Anyway, hideout. Andreas opens his eyes. Okay, 
So now we have a, a clear a clear want for him, from him. Um, wants to be part of the military again. So we we, we communicate that. Um, um, he gets imprisoned by unknown group. Uh, he gets imprisoned by Russian commander's son. There we go. Forced to become wiser in his fight and gets by his captors. Okay. Yeah. Yas. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. He gets imprisoned by Russian commander's son, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> Um, he's forced to become wiser in his fighting or whatever. Uh, yeah. So that's his unfamiliar situation. He is, gets imprisoned. He's never really been imprisoned before, I guess. At least not, uh, recently. He just, okay. Andreas opens his eyes. He looks around, um, a single light is um on single light is blaring on him he looks around to see a shadowy figure in the corner of the room okay so we got that, I guess. Yep. <laughs> that's our, um, that's, that's scene five. That's it. That's the whole episode. No. Um, I don't know. Uh, wow. This is such a long line too. Oh my gosh. I just forgot again that you guys can't see. Oh my gosh. Stupid. Very stupid. Ugh. Anyway, this is such a long line, and it doesn't even stop. Like this, this is like continued too. Very weird. Um. Anyway, Whew. I think I'm gonna stop the stream here. I'm kind of tired, so. Um. Yeah, that's where the stream shall end. I might stream tomorrow and we'll continue this uh, screenplay or I might continue working on Earth and Moon tomorrow, whichever, whichever one I feel like tomorrow. So, yep. Thank you for joining in today. We, um, I had, I had fun. Lots of fun. Um, and this is an interesting thing that I'm writing. I, I actually do like Andreas. And the AI. I like their little dynamic. So, anyway. Th th that's it. That's it for me. Uh, subscribe. <laughs>